turn turn to the teacher turn 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 to the teacher and welcome back I'm Mike with the Turntable Teachers, and class is back in session. Here for another guest speaker episode at AOA Studios. If you're an artist, podcaster, or content creator of any kind, make sure to hit us up at aoastudios.org to book your session or service today. And I'm joined by two very special guests yes. joining us from the even more, I guess, North Shore than where we are currently from Newburyport, Massachusetts. Vinyl villain, and then the one and only Giles from yes. Van Buren out of Brockton, Massachusetts. They just, uh, not just released, but in the last couple months, released an incredible project called Mookie Blaylock. We're going to definitely get into it, yep. but first and foremost, welcome to the show, guys, and how are you both doing? I feel good. I feel good. Thank you for having us. Of course. Wonderful. Wonderful. Thank you. <laughs> of course. Very excited to have you both. This has been a bit of a long time coming, and we've been talking about having you both on for quite a bit, so yes, sir. very yeah. much looking forward to it. Let's get it. So, yeah, when we do these episodes, normally we start with the objective. So we get to know a little bit about you guys. That's the first segment of the show. And, Giles, I want to start with you. Um, I When I had Meech on a couple months ago, um, I asked him a very similar question, and I'm curious to hear your take. So I feel as though, you know, when people talk about Massachusetts music, a lot of the shine goes strict, straight to Boston, right, in some of its suburbs, like right. more specifically Roxbury, Dorchester, places like that, where there is a ton of talent, of course. But I feel as though there's something uniquely special about Brockton as a creative arts scene, right? right? There's so many artists that have come from Brockton, professional athletes, like what is in the water in Brockton? And, <laughs> and it, Meech had a pretty interesting answer, but I'm curious for you of like, you know, what makes Brockton such a uniquely special art scene? Um, I think it's because we're like right next door to Boston. We're like tw no traffic, 20 minutes south. And, like, we kind of get, like, little brothered a lot. So we got that chip on our shoulder, especially from an art perspective, because, you know, there's not much of a music scene outside of the Sound Lab. Shout out to the Sound Lab. Um, but anything music-related, you kind of got to go up to Boston. But I just feel like with Brockton, it's kind of like, okay, we got to prove ourselves just as much, if not even more, to prove that we deserve to even be in certain spaces in Boston. So I think that's what like contributes to like the overall success of Brockton from a creative standpoint, to be uh, quite honest. That's a great, great response. Great answer. Um, and then how did you get into making music? And I want to kind of get a deep dive in terms of like your role in Van Buren and how, from your perspective, um, how you got involved with, with that collective. Yeah. Um, so I, I grew up, I grew up around music. Um, my older sister, she's like she's significantly older than me, probably like sixteen years older than me. Maybe. Yeah. Oh wow. So like, my early years of music came from her. Just big fan of Jay Z. Then my old, my two older brothers, they were playing music all the time. Like, say to my raps, like stack bundles, the logs, dip set, just real like a lot of street shit, like hood to hood DVDs. Growing up, all that stuff. But I never wanted to be a rapper. I always wanted to be a manager. Like, I was a big fan of, like, Dame Dash, like, growing up, or Blog Era, like, Johnny Shipes. Like, I looked, like, I always do my research. I just love music. So I always like to be, like, who's the person behind the scenes? So I always wanted to do that. Then, like, fast forward, um, I was making music in high school. Nothing crazy. Just, like, early, early SoundCloud. Not even, like, the 20, like, 15 era SoundCloud. Like, the other SoundCloud era before that. <laughs> <laughs> like, talk, I wasn't even, like, promoting that shit. Like, even then, like, Felix, uh, me and Felix went to the same high school together. Uh, we tell this story all the time. Uh, fun fact, like me and him, me and him had the same class together in high school, but we generally build a friendship off um, the double XL uh, freshman class cover. He brought oh, it yeah. to school, and I was like, "Oh shit, he's tapped in." So that's how we build our like friendship. But um, Felix was making music. Felix was making clothes. I was on my fashion shit. He was too. But Felix started making music. He dropped a couple records locally in Brockton that kind of like do, did pretty well. And, you know, I was just influenced by him. Honestly, I'm with him every day. Now I'm like, all right, if he's going to make music, I'm the type of person where like, I'm not just going to sit there and just watch and, like, you feel me, just watch another person, like, like get their shine off. I want to hold my weight, too. So we were all, like, a close-knit group. 
And um, he started making music, so I'm like, all right, I'll just start making music too. And I was always good at it, but I never took it serious. So, like, I tell people I started taking music serious like 2018, 2019, when I first started rapping. So that's how, like, that came about. And VB was just more like me, Felix, uh, my boy Moses and Shelby, who we just a collective, like, just getting fly running through the city in Boston. Some of us went to college out there. And then that just transitioned to music. Me and Felix just did music, like, and then from there we grabbed Ricky, his little brother. Luke went to school with Ricky. And like it was just a web from there. Honestly, Meech grew up with Felix since like grade school, so Meech was always in the picture. But Meech went to college in Springfield, so we'll see him like once every like three weeks. And Meech comes from that freestyle and shit. So like he was just ready to rap every time he came into the city. So that's like basically like the origin of VB when it came about. That's dope. That's dope. Um, and I'm curious too, from your perspective as well. Uh, so obviously Van Buren, you guys shortly after 2018, I feel like it was maybe 2020 ish or something like that. I feel like it's when you guys really started to pop a bit and really get to where you guys are now being not only just a, a collective that is really making noise in Massachusetts, but really outside of Massachusetts, really right. but nationally. Right. Um, I'm curious for you in, in your perspective, when you get in the room and you create with the VB guys, what is that process like? Because I know there's, you know, there's that old saying of too many cooks in the kitchen, but for whatever reason, you guys seem to make it work. And I know with some collectives, it can be certain, you know, certain things can be challenging right. know, to actually make music. So I'm curious right. for you, like how that how that process normally goes. Um, to be quite honest, it's changed over the years um, for better in my eyes. Um, early on, like 2019, like you were saying, all of us were in the room together, just happy to make music. Mm-hmm. <clears throat> Um, like it didn't even matter how many cooks were in the kitchen, we're all gonna make music together. But uh, fast forward now, it's kind of like everybody, like you know, we all reach certain levels of success or certain people's uh, type of sound change. So like now, more than ever now, we're not really making music together all in one room. But it could be times when it's just me and Meech in the studio. We'll do a record, then we just throw it in the group chat, like, yo, someone, if anybody wants to jump on it, mm-hmm. or Invader and ET, they'll work on something separately in their own studio. So, like, the love is still there. We're still making music together all the time, like, damn near every day. But it went from everybody cooks in the kitchen to now we kind of know each other enough to be like, okay, Luke and ET just made a great record. It kind of doesn't need anybody else on this. Like, there's no need to jump on it or, like, there's a good record and everybody's like 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 someone throws something in group chat like four people be like yo let me get on let me get on it and it's like yeah everybody could get on it for sure then from there we'll see how it goes from there but that's basically how we work we kind of know each other like we've been around together forever so we all know how each other like like to work and that's a great i think mature sort of uh, uh, evolution from where you started yeah that that's how like dsm work like for me that's my favorite album out of the um two um well three if you count the ep um, projects, um, there's not much four or five people on the songs. If you listen to DSM, there's two, two people, three, couple, four, rec- four artists, but right. we don't have much records with mad people on the record. Yeah, that one felt more almost like more of a compilation versus you know, uh, bad for press was more of like a I think a, like more right. of a conceptual project. Yeah, no, I, yeah. I definitely agree with that. Yeah, with yeah. DSM, a hundred percent, honestly, like it was just like literally like. We did a bunch of studio sessions together, but a lot of records were just like, yo, I cooked this up. So who wants to jump on it? Mm-hmm. it? Like even like the record like the source that had Conway on it. Like I had I was sitting on that and then we got Conway on it, then like at the same time Ricky said he wanted to jump on it and uh Felix said he wanted to jump on it. So it was like you said, feel like a compilation. Dope. Dope. All right, Mr. Vinyl Villain. Yo, yo. So originally from Reading, you said. Yeah, in our yeah, conversation yeah. with high a lot school, fair. High school, went, went to high school in Reading. Awesome. And moved then, up north. Cool. I lived in Reading for like six months. Very, yeah. very, very small stint. <laughs> uh, but then you moved up to Newburyport, as you mentioned. You've been up there yeah. for a long time. I'm really curious about your entry point into music because you, to be honest, I've, I've listened to your beats now for a couple of years. I know you very well through, obviously, John Glass and yeah. the Nowhere Studios guys. Big shout out to them. Shout out to Glass. And um, so, nice. but, but I'm curious for you, like, when did you feel like this sort of inclination to want to produce music and, and get into sort of hip hop and all that? I'm, I'm very curious about your uh, sort of origin I mean, story. It's, it's kind of similar. You know, I feel like every everybody's story is similar in a way. Sure. Um, it usually stems from like an older sibling or something like that um my older brother i have an older brother and an older sister 
Um, my mother has always listened to music. You know, I've just been surrounded by music my entire life. Um, but my brother kind of introduced me to hip hop. You know, when he'd pick me up from elementary school, you know, middle school, stuff like that. He'd Cypress Hill, Nas, Wu Tang, like those were the CDs that he was listening to. Yep. Um, I even remember. I, I'll never forget to uh, Chub Rock. He had a Chub Rock CD. And nobody wow. know, you know, I don't, know who that I don't is. even know who that is either. See what I'm saying? <laughs> Do your Googles, right? <laughs> but um, so yeah, you know, it, it stemmed from that. And then um, in high school, I uh, I got turntables, started DJing, you know, house parties, things like that. Um, and skip school, you know, friends would come over, freestyle, and I would just play instrumentals and shit like that. And uh, then fast forward. It, uh, it kind of turned into production. You know, I wanted to take it to the next level. Like with the turntables, I, I'd throw instrumentals on. And then if I had an acapella, I would try to match it, you know, and do like my own remixes. Then I was like, then I got a Dr. Dr. Rhythm, the Boss drum machine. And I uh, started looping drums. And then, you know, I'd play the sample from the, you know, the record and then try to throw a remix on that. So it just kind of progressed and then I went to college for it big mistake because I could have just YouTube university it yeah but uh <laughs> at the end of the day you know I did what I did went to school and in my honestly in my first semester of school um New England Institute of Art which is no longer uh in Brookline unfortunately but um I met a kid from Tennessee and in my first semester we booked a studio he had an MPC 25 he brought that in, showed me how to chop samples and drums and stuff. Next day, I overborrowed on my student loan, went to Guitar Center and bought one. There you go. And then it was just, you know. <laughs> that's, that's fire. <laughs> Listen, yeah, that's I, awesome. I literally yeah. walked into the financial aid office and I was like, I need more money. <laughs> <laughs> went to Guitar Center and that was that. And then, yeah, just, you know, slowly started, you know, making beats and you know, hindsight, if I probably went back to those old MPC files, there's probably some fire on there, but I'd probably go back and like reflip it, you know, sure, cause like, sure. the, I don't even know what I was programming for drums back then, yeah. <laughs> but you know, yeah, it's, it's been a journey and, uh, I love every part of it, every right. step of the way. Um, you know, and I've, I feel like in the past couple of years, specifically with this album with Giles, you know, I've, I've found my sound. I would agree with that. Totally. Um, I mean, granted, I've only known you for a few years, but in my sort of like going back in, in uh, you know, uh, some of your history, like I feel as yeah. though like you're starting to peak now, which is really, I'm, I'm happy for you. I feel yeah, like I that's, that, it's a long man. time coming and it's, you know, you could have quit at any point in time, right? But for yeah. you to stick with it and then to kind of hit this pinnacle, which I feel like is only the iceberg for you. I feel like you're starting to really, but also at the same time too, I almost feel like a lot of your, a lot of your production is very rooted in that '90s sort of hip hop. So, like Absolutely. you, you mentioning uh, Cypress Hill and um, all those, you know, Nas and all these different artists. Like, I feel like it makes total sense, and I'm and I'm glad that you've sort of been able to find a lane in all of the chaos of the modern 2020s era music. You know what I mean? For, yeah. for you, because I feel like you wear that sort of influence right on your sleeve with your with your with your beats. They really do have that '90s grungy sort of sample based feel to them. Yeah, but in the best way. Been, yeah, that's always been. You know, my, my goal is just to kind of create my own sound, even though it's, you know, rooted in another sound. Totally. You know what I mean? hundred um, percent. But I think, like I said, with this album, you know, Giles was able to, to really like help me find the sound, you know what I mean? And I've had multiple people say since, since that's come out that like, you know, like, where are you going to go from here mm -hmm. type shit? And I, I honestly, you know what I mean? Like just keep building on that sound. Yeah, I, I really do feel as though you both complement each other so well on this project. And I think that's a great segue, honestly. So we're going to get into the main lesson now. So obviously talking about what it is you both have going on currently. And of course, it's Mookie Blaylock. It's the album. Uh, but before we get into the album, I'm really curious how you two sort of became acquainted. Um, mm -hmm. Because it doesn't feel as though, at least on paper, I was like, is that going to... Is that gonna work? But then, yeah. like you hear it, and you're like, "Oh my god, that totally works!" It's just not something I ever yeah. would have anticipated in type of the, uh, in type of uh, collaboration. But I'm yeah. curious for you guys, like, how did this all start? Uh, a Twitter post. <laughs> or, yeah, honestly. What um, was that Twitter post? Uh, a couple of years ago, I posted on Twitter um, that I was looking for, you know, looking not looking for a new artist to work with, but looking, f 
yeah, for an artist to work with. Um, in the past, I've done mainly solo projects with artists, uh, like just one artist and I'm the producer. And it's mainly been a lot of New York artists. And um, so I just posted on Twitter that I was looking for, you know, a new artist to work with. And Jeremy Corellis uh, from Steady Leaning and now uh, DVD Couture, he uh, commented, this man right here. And uh, John Glass uh, co-signed that. And then that was that. You know, I sent him a message and he hit me with the email sent some beats and juice was the first record that okay. we did nice yeah, man that then, was that uh, was yeah. like late 2020 mm -hmm. so i shot the video premiere like january 2021 we did that one so this has been a long time coming for you guys then for with this project you guys been working on this for a number of years no. <laughs> oh, no, we did that in Juice, January. Juice, that was oh, it. okay, okay. Juice oh, my, I thought you said twenty. Oh, my, yeah. okay. my, my apologies. And, um, okay. And then you know what I mean. We did that. That record was crazy. Everybody loved that. Um, and then you know Giles got accosted by people in on, in the street. You know, asking <laughs> when we were going to do a full album. <laughs> yeah, I mean, we dropped Juice. Then like um, VB stuff started moving again. I see. Okay. We're working on um, DSM and stuff like that. I can't speak on what Villain had going on, but then um, nothing. <laughs> a lot of VB stuff, just whatever. Then once it was time to be like, everybody in the group was like, right, we gotta make solo records. Like we gotta start like you know identifying ourselves again individually so let's make new music then um i was kind of in the bind of like where i wanted to go direction wise because mm -hmm. we was doing solo stuff i'm using group stuff for like three years so i'm like damn i don't even know like what i sound like as a solo artist then um i was working on new, a whole new sound with like a whole different set of producers then um you know, VB, we're kind of we're structured, like, with management, like, we got to drop around this time for everybody, da, da, da. so I'm like, yeah, I don't have time to, like, I don't, I can't afford to work on a new sound. That may take a year or two at the minimum. So then I'm like, uh, I ran into Mike Angelo, the producer, outside of Bodega, and then he was like, yo, when are you going to make an album with Villain? <laughs> and I was like, when am I going to make an album with Villain? Then I literally <laughs> hit Villain up, like, 48 hours later, so let's make an album. Then we've been rocking and rolling ever since. The villain was like, fuck yeah, let's do this shit. <laughs> yeah, for <laughs> sure. Make yeah, it happen. For sure, yeah. <laughs> so I'm really, so as a sports fan myself, growing up playing basketball, I'm super curious about sort of like the Mookie Blaylock thing. Like I really want to just dive into that. Like, and the, like really the sports theme in terms of like the names of the songs throughout the project. Like, yeah. so, but why Mookie Blaylock? I'm so, I'm so enamored with that. He's just a cool. It's a it's a fire name. It is I, a great name. That's really literally is. that's yeah. literally the only reason. Just I just like this name. Plus, I was, he was a, he, 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 a great he defender. Had hoops, man. Yeah. He was a good defender. I think he was a one time All Star. Like, don't quote me, but I think he actually made a All Star game. But well, I like how yeah, you guys yeah, yeah. sample like some of the game commentary throughout. Like, I feel it oh, was yeah. right after. Might have been after Beeper Buzzin, where. Like the the it big is, the yeah. big the big playoff game he had right yeah, where he yeah, had yeah. like eight he broke the record for steals or yeah, something like yeah. that yeah. and I when I was doing some research on it I found this interesting apparently I don't know if you guys knew this or not but Pearl Jam wanted to name themselves Mookie Blaylock but then yeah. didn't yeah. based on I believe it was some of the controversy that he had surrounding it I, I could be misquoting the it amount of people why. who told me that is, is <laughs> extraordinary of, yeah. like I didn't I didn't know that I think you was probably the first one but since then maybe like five or six other people tell me I don't even know who Pearl Jam is I can't even <laughs> tell you like if it's a band or one I think it's a band right it yeah, is a band yes yeah I don't very know nothing about band. them but they got good taste they we Mookie Blaylock is this a great <laughs> yeah. yeah it's funny it's when, when, when I was looking for clips to you know for, for skits and things like that yeah. I came up on a a clip of like one of the guitarists from Pearl Jam was like at a, a Hawks p practice or some shit like that and was like talking to Mookie Blaylock and kind of like they were going back and forth and he even Mookie he was like yeah man he's like I don't, I don't like I don't think he listened to Pearl Jam no I, yeah <laughs> there's, there's, there's obvious reasons why <laughs> yeah, yeah. I mean, so I was like yeah I, just, I, yeah I found it mad funny too I was like because I didn't know that until like yeah we started working on it and then when i'm look like googling mookie blaylock all this pearl jam shit's coming up and i'm like what the fuck is the correlation here yeah <laughs> i assumed i assumed you you guys have probably heard that a couple of times but i was fascinated by that too because i was like oh this isn't this is pretty interesting yeah. but 
So who, whose idea was that? Like to, for the Mookie Blowout thing, was it natural or was? Oh, uh, no, nah, that that <laughs> that was on me. I I, I knew I was gonna name the album that. Okay. Honestly, like off rip, but like I'm just I like to think ahead of time. Like I need my albums like way in advance. Like I probably got like three album titles I'm gonna use throughout my life's like upcoming. Okay. So I already knew I was gonna name the album that. Then I brought the I brought the vision to um, Villain and John. Shout out to John. He was there throughout that whole process. So we was all um, just came together, just creating ideas like skits and just dope clips. We felt like would just make sense. Then everything just fell into place. Um, Polo Sporting Goods by Wretch was a big influence at sports. Uh, not well, the cover arts like got some like sports in there. Obviously, um, Blue Chips. Blue Chips 2 Action Bronson uh, that was a big influence. oh yeah I can kind of see that a bit yeah, yeah. That, that cover's badass by the way yeah for sure I, I think it's hard man I love for I sure love so that like that, that, those were like real inspirations like I made like a mood board on my notes of just colors and stuff mm-hmm. um, Ghostface Killer Iron Man the cover I really spoke yeah. to me like and just certain album titles so like all that was like well thought out in advance on like what I wanted to accomplish with the album dope and then in terms of, like, how did you guys decide on some of the uh, athletes that you decided to name some of the songs off after? So, like, obviously, Sauce Gardner and Kobe. Um, There's a couple others now that, I've met, that are escaping me. But Glenn you, Rice. Glenn Rice, Glenn that's Rice. right. Yeah, yeah. Uh, Quincy Hanley, I think it was, <laughs> yeah. too. You got a bunch. Right. Um, so was that intentional as well, or were those just kind of like? Because I know you you do mention Kobe in Kobe Fro, like obviously right. you, you that's like a, a reference. But I was curious, like, does that uh, an intentional uh, theme, or that just kind of happened naturally? No, it just happened naturally. I, I always drop sports references in my um, songs. <laughs> me and Meach be battling for that spot. But Meech, got me, <laughs> Meech got me beat by a mile, but <laughs> I like the Glenn Rice one. Was just like I just said his name in a wreck. I was like, oh, that's a name for one. Then like even Sauce Garden, I said his name. I was like, I'm gonna name, I'm gonna name it off that. Um, I think those are the only ones. Um, yeah, Quincy Hanley is oh, yeah, different. That's, yeah, that's different. Yeah, okay. Quincy Hanley. That's like Schoolboy Q's government name. And that's oh, that's right. That's and that's right. because like the hook was like a uh, OD to him mm-hmm. uh, with his sound. But um, yeah, it was just it was just it was honestly just like that. It was just like random. It could have been any other. If I name drop any other artist, it could have—I mean, athlete could have been that. Like, I'm kind of mad at um, name drop Allen Iverson enough because he's my favorite athlete ever. <laughs> so I got to make a record about him. Fair enough. Name Fair dropped enough. him an album, but I didn't like. Got to name it after him. Yeah. Yeah. Totally. Um, and I'm curious too for both of you guys. I know you both have been pretty outspoken about this being your best bodies of work, or at least. In, in many different facets. So I'm curious, like, yeah. you know, sort of uh, you know, say your plea right now. Like, why is why is this body of work the best that you feel like you've put out to this point? And how do you feel like each other, and then sort of part B to that com- uh, uh, question, how do you feel like you both complemented each other on this project and sort of helped each other get to that point? I mean, <clears throat> I think I, I, I stand on it. It's album of the year. Um just the the uh, the work that we put in i mean i compare this project to you know the other projects that i've dropped um with art with other artists and up until this point i hadn't released a project uh since a cold world with uncle john that felt so cohesive and put together um at, you know, as this one was, um, working side by side with Giles. I mean, we, there was no, he didn't record anything by himself and then send it. And, you know, every, every session we were together, um, recording, mixing everything. Um, so I think that contributes a lot to it too, just cause we were there the entire thing, you know what I mean? The energy, um, bouncing ideas off of each other, I mean, this man is a visionary. I don't think anybody really realizes that, but he had the vision. Like, I, I provided the soundscape, and mm-hmm. I'll take all, you know what I mean, all the praise for that, all the flowers for that. But this man right here, like, he came up with the <laughs> the album title, the, <laughs> the songs, the videos. Like, this, this motherfucker's a genius right here. <laughs> I appreciate that. Um, But, yeah, I mean, that's, I, I just, I think that the beats are, like I said earlier, like, I finally honed in on my specific sound with this mm-hmm. and um 
you know, it's it's grimy but clean at the same time. Yeah, I think it's a good way to describe um, it. And yeah, I mean, as far as how we complement each other, like I just think that the music fits the lyrics, like what he was rapping about. Um, you know what I mean? Like I can't hear those songs over any other beats. A, yeah, I, I think that's a great answer. I I, I agree with a lot of it. Yeah, no, nah, everything he says, I I. I, I agree. I think it's album of the year. Like, even like like lyrically, outside of like my VB label mates, I don't think anybody else had better project. Like lyrically, I think I was the, I had the best. Production wise, I think we was the best. Then like just putting that to the side too. I think what gets lost nowadays with like current music is like the presentation. Like mm. like the um the skits. You don't need a skit to make a great album, but. The way we intertwine the skits with the album, bridges, um, the cover art, me like outsourcing an artist to paint my cover art. Like, yeah, that's not mute, that's not the lyric aspect, but that's still part of hip hop, like music in general. Like doing that, um, the merch, doing um, the listening party. We had the NBA Jam fucking game you could play type shit. Like everything was presented like like a real album in my like a studio album like there was no budget behind it but that shit looked expensive it looked kind of expensive but it, <laughs> it really it looked more expensive than what it was mm-hmm. but i just feel like that's what like took my this album my head and shoulders above everybody it's kind of like all these other artists locally that we all had a great meal but our presentation on the plate was like clean like like that shit was like perfection i don't think anybody like mastered that like, nah, like even, even the videos yeah the videos, <laughs> the videos, the videos yeah. like come on like, there's, there's there's more coming that that are done that do you know what gets lost not to interrupt you what gets yeah. lost the commercials bro mm, like I'm, I'm, a, I'm gonna put a i'm gonna do an ig story about the like even the commercials like before we dropped any record mm-hmm. i don't know if we dropped the record yet i think no, like commercial was the first before well, prior to, after juice we did commercials yeah. we have uh we did two commercials to promote the album and those were like those nobody's gave me, done that. yeah. Nobody's, no one's doing that. Like they're not, like I don't even call them trailers. They were like commercials. Like I sat down and like really wrote the theme, the theme board behind it. Like Again, the treatment. This man is a genius. Like it's just so much. Like the only, it's not even a regret. The only thing I wish I had was a bigger budget. Like sure. I, it would have been explosive. Like <laughs> it would have been hella crazy. The amount of ideas I had. In my head, like that bigger budget, I wish I had like a bigger reach, like so everybody could witness everything. Cause I feel like that gets lost in the sauce. Like I feel like now that we've been like doing interviews, people are starting to see like the shit I be talking, and some people may feel away about it is what it is. But I just feel like I could back it up. I feel like creatively, I could back it up, and I just think it just speaks for itself. Yeah, but I also think too on off that point, like for you guys to achieve what you've achieved, given that this didn't have a, a major budget. Because I agree with everything you said. I and likewise, I do think this is one of it's, it's one of my favorite projects that came out of Massachusetts this year. Um, when I think when it was like the New England Hip Hop Awards or whatever, they were like you know throwing nominees. Like I made sure like I wrote down Mookie Blaylock by both of you because I believe that to my core that it was one of the better, if not the best, uh, hip hop album right. that I heard this year in Massachusetts. And uh, to spoil it for you guys, I mean, it's been it'll be out now for a while now, uh, obviously not out yet as we're recording this. But um, on my top 23 uh, songs from Massachusetts of the year, Bieber Buzzin is well in my top five. So I just want to let you guys know that as well. That's already out as well. If you want to check out that list, if you guys somehow missed it, it's on my uh, my Instagram or our Instagram, I should say. So that is very much one of my favorite songs of the year. Um, and so I, yeah, I, I think that, you know, you guys should be, you know, pushing it as it was this big sort of production. Cause it was, right. even if right. it didn't have the big budget, who cares? And you guys right. are still yeah. promoting it now. It's been out for months, but right. you still have, you know, videos in the vault that you're going to promote. Like that's the whole sort of, I was listening to Tyler creator talk about this. Someone was asking him like it had been a year out from, um, call me before you get lost. Like, oh, when's your next project coming out? And he's like, I'm still promoting. Call me before you get lost. Like, right. or call me when you get lost. Like, I don't know what you're talking about. Like, right. there's still juice to squeeze out of this orange. And, yeah, we stand on that. That same video, we threw that in the group chat, the VB group chat. It's like, I, I think that's another reason why. Like, I kind of said already that I feel so passionately about this album. Like, like not only does it speak for itself, it's just the hard work we put into it. Like, mm-hmm. especially from a financial standpoint, where like no one's really. 
everybody everybody wants everybody. Some people really want to make it in music, but no one's really to invest financially on it. Mm-hmm. And the fact that me no and Villain, put their money with their mouth is. Yeah, yeah, like the fact that me and Villain invested money in ourselves and we came out with that great body of work, it's like, all right, I'll be my biggest fan. I'll be my biggest support. I got no problem. Like, And the people who don't agree probably even never even heard the album. So it's like, right. once you hear the album, it'll make sense. If you want to make it like, watch this interview when you can and then listen to the album and just go on both our Instagram page. You'll see our, the commercials, the music videos, the merch, uh, the, the, the shows. The shows alone is a whole That's new That's what experience. I was going to say. Like, y'all motherfuckers didn't even get, like. Like, they don't get it. Like, yeah, it's just, you know, like. And it's okay. We've bro. done, you know, we, we've done two shows for the album thus far. And, um, you know, yeah, like, I, I again, like, I don't think that anybody else in, in, in the city is really doing what we're doing or trying to do with the album. Um, you know, the next show, you know, that, that we do, like, you know, hopefully everybody can make it out and actually see what we're talking about. Because it's not just, you know, me playing beats and him rap. Like, we got a whole thing, a whole theme to go with the Mookie right. Blaylock and the basketball theme. Right. And on top of it, like... Like we said, like we're still, you know, it's months later and we're still out here active doing interviews, doing shows, still promoting everything. As you should Got be. videos ready to drop. Facts. Other people that dropped albums this year, even around the same time as us, I'm not seeing that same, the same work ethic that we've got right. with, with some of yeah. those. You know what I mean? No, so 100%. I think that's, again, what, what, Makes us, you know, just a little bit better. <laughs> right now, sure. for sure. There you go. You know what I mean? Like, <laughs> I, I, we're still so. pushing it. We're not, it's not microwave music. You know what I mean? Like, we didn't just throw something in the microwave real quick. All right, here you go. Now it's on to the next one. Like, a lot of these artists and producers in the city and even just in general do. Right. You know what I mean? Like, yeah. as an artist, he could could have dropped the album and moved on to the next thing. He got a group. of. He got Van Buren. Like, you could move on to... Facts. All types of other shit, man. As a producer, there's a million artists, you know what I mean? Like, but yeah. we're not doing that. We're like invested in Mookie. And this is how it's been done for years. And I mean, I know recently yeah. now in the last few years, I think it's been this sort of microwave, okay, I just put this out now, it's on to the next thing. Even like I don't want to like, you know, make it about myself, but like just to, to talk to you off your point, like I stopped doing weekly episodes for that reason. I now do bi-weekly episodes because I want them to live and breathe a little bit more, right? Because right? Right. I don't want to oh, make yeah. you feel like anyone that's a listener of our show to feel like, all right, I got to listen to this podcast or else like I'm going to be behind because I now got to, there's going to be a new one next week. Like right. mm. at least give us some time to breathe, right? I mean, yeah. I know it's very different, but like in that same vein of just like, no, nah, I'm going to clip up, you know, seven to 10 clips from this. If people think it's overload, I don't care. Like it's, it should have its place and not feel like, okay, in seven days, it's just moving on to the next episode. So, yes. you know, um, I feel like it's sort of in the same breath. Uh, you know, it's tough, t- tough question, but which you guys, or maybe I'll actually I'll spin it. I won't say your favorite song. What song, if nobody has heard Mookie Blaylock, what do you got? What song do you guys think is a good introduction to, to Mookie Blaylock? If, if they've never heard the album yet and they're just coming on to you guys for the first time through this interview, you can pick. I'm going to pick. Yeah. Oh man. My my choice is different. Um, I don't even know what's my choice. <laughs> you know, the whole album honestly is fire. So you just listen to the whole album top to bottom because it's it's it plays a specific way. Um, but if if you if you're a Spotify person and you just want to type something in, um, I would say I would say Kobe Fro. Kobe Fro. That's yeah. a good, that's a good choice. That was one of the singles, That'll so I feel like that, that makes sense. Yeah. Um, mind if we play a clip of it for the people to get a little uh, taste absolutely. taste of it? Yeah, All absolutely. right, well, here is Kobe Fro off of Mookie Blaylock, Giles and Vinyl Villain's new, latest album. And uh, we're going to take a quick break, and we'll be right back. I'm thankful for them days. I miss my niggas. It won't be the same. They say when a real nigga dies, it starts to pour rain. My cousin crashing at my crib. My mama running out of space. 40 beams in my social stash. Then the ceiling safe. My 33rd. Bitch. 
bitch, you a hoe. You ain't about that life, ain't everybody knows. Niggas got the drop and they rushing through your dope. I was with the shits back when Kobe had the fro. And that was Kobe Fro off of Mookie Blaylock, Giles and Vinyl Villain's latest project. You can make sure to uh, listen to that. It's linked in the description, Spotify, Apple, wherever you get your music. Uh, but don't go anywhere yet. We still got plenty left with Giles and Vinyl Villain. Um, I want to talk a little bit more about the project. I have a couple more questions there, but I do want to transition to a segment we call Pop Quiz, which is uh, uh, a segment where we ask rapid fire questions. Now for you guys, some of these questions might be tailored to both of you or individually. Okay. Um, and some of these questions might have things to do with music. Some might not have anything to do with music at all. It might just be things that I found out about you guys. Nothing embarrassing. It's all good stuff. We promise. Okay. And you can't, and you can't fail because it's all questions about you guys. So <laughs> suck it tests. <laughs> well, that's, well, that's always the, the majority of people that come on. They're like, fuck, they're yeah. really bringing me back a to like, quiz. To pop quiz. I don't want to do a pop quiz right now, but it's probably the most fun pop quiz you've ever done. I, right, I, and if, go. and if you don't feel that way at the end, then uh, I'm sorry. I'm submitting it. feedback. Okay. Yeah, please do. We, we always, we always accept feedback out here. All right, Giles, we're going to put the first one to you. Describe your experience freestyling and being interviewed on Static Selectus platform recently. Um, it was dope. It was a good experience. Um, yeah, it was, it, was just, it was just a good experience. Um, he had some technical difficulties leading up, so it was like pretty fast. And what I've been telling people is like, oh, everybody's like, damn, you only gave like a 16. It's like, I was going to jump back in. But I think he thought I was done, and I heard the music go lower on my headphones. I was like, ah, oh, fuck. I had more. <laughs> I really had more to say. I had, like, another 32 bars to really, like, jump back in. But overall, um, great experience. Static's a great guy. His team's a great guy. Um, I got no complaints. It's one of those things when you do it in person, it's like, it's not really a big deal. Like, you overreact. But once you get there and you put in the position, it's like, ah, eh, maybe, uh, you know, supposed to do this. <laughs> That's it. My man was born to do yeah, this. Yeah, it's like, I don't know, like, I'm, none of us are, like, athletes, but I feel like you just, I'm supposed to be in the NBA. Like, That's I'm supposed it. to be around these people. Like, it's the attitude like you got to have. Yeah. I, I hear you. I was awesome. pumped to see that. I was too. I was pumped for you. Yeah. So that's yeah. why, you know, I feel like it, I, I hear what you're saying, but I feel like for a lot of people, it was kind of like a, a whoa moment. Like, oh, Giles from Van Buren's really, yeah. really, like, really here. You know what I mean? Like, not to say that you weren't before, but I think it, it, it put it in perspective a little bit different for like the level of where you're going and yeah. where you are. Yeah. And nah, that was definitely a good look. Him and his um, camp really liked my music. So I was thankful. I, I good. Well, as they should, it's great. It's great. Uh, great music. All right. Vinyl villain. I know you're a big horror film fan. Yes. What is your Mount Rushmore of horror films? And is that. Krampus in that Mount Rushmore? Of hor- so my Mount Rushmore of horror films? Yeah, so your top four favorite horror films of all time. Oh, and, Jesus. And it, on, in the you and know, is, follow- is Krampus is in Krampus there. in that. I, yeah, yeah. the season. Krampus is not in there. Okay, um, fair enough. Get that out the way. Do you like Krampus? Is that like a... a I mean, I'm, I'm not opposed to it. <laughs> I'm just, you know, Christmas, Halloween, they don't really go, you know. So you don't like Krampus? Not really. Because I was told to ask you about Krampus with very little context, so I'm just changing. No, no. I mean, I, I do. I did a, a spin off my logo a couple years back during Christmas that was like Krampus instead of, you know, Got it. Snidely Whiplash. Um, but that's as far as my Krampus knowledge goes. Understood. <laughs> all right. So then, um, four, four favorite horror films of all time uh, The original Halloween. Okay. Michael Myers, my dude. Um, the original Scream. I like that movie. He likes the slasher. Films. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Big, big time slasher fan. Um, I, see, I see a trend. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Halloween, Scream. Um, Put this man on the spot. Yeah, shit, man. There's, there's so many. Um, I don't want to say Nightmare on Elm Street. I'm not a big Freddy Krueger fan. I'd probably say The Thing. Okay. Go 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 with a throwback, a classic throwback. And It. Okay. The new one. The newer one. Yeah. Fair yeah. enough. Solid four choices. I'm a big horror film fan as well. Yeah, I like the more psychological horror. Like the Midsommar type. Okay. All like right, that yeah, type yeah. of shit. So I just saw um, Infinity Pool. Um, oh, okay, I haven't seen that yet. Don't. 
Don't. Okay. No. <laughs> <laughs> Don't. <laughs> Save yourself well. a couple hours. <laughs> <laughs> this episode will not be sponsored by Infinity Pool. <laughs> Giles, on the sort of uh, TV movie sort of train here. True or false, is Game of Thrones your favorite TV series of all time? No. It's not. <laughs> no, it's not. No, it's The Wire. The Wire. Yeah, it's not even close. It's The Wire. Game cool. of Thrones up there. It's probably in my top five. Yeah, you five, you, you, you like Game of Thrones, right? Yeah, so, yeah. big game. Uh, the last season was kind of trash. Oh, yeah, I'm right there with you, brother. But yeah, yeah, The Wire, bro. The Wire is just, the writing on The Wire is just incredible for the type of show it was. Like mm. For you to have that type of writing is really, really impressive. Okay. And we paid uh, homage to that in the first commercial. Yeah, facts. The first commercial is a scene from The oh, okay. Wire. I should have caught that. Type of thing, yeah. <laughs> um, an underrated show I don't really talk about a lot online that I really, really liked was uh, Mr. Robot. I think the writing on that was incredible. Like that's That is an really underrated good. show that not a lot yeah. of people talk about. Yeah, I think that's yeah. like, that's in my top five as well. Huh, okay. Type of thing. Fair enough. Yeah. I like it. All right, back to villain. Describe your experience hanging out with Method Man. Oh, that was awesome. I'll I, never, I didn't even know I'll, that. I'll never forget that. Yeah, no. Um, shit, man. This was probably fucking 20 years ago, 15 years ago maybe. Um, me and two of my boys from high school um, went to a Wu-Tang concert out in Worcester at the DCU Center. And um, we decided to just stay out there for the night instead of driving back. And... Uh, go to the hotel room after we're outside smoking and uh two tour buses pull up and we're like no fucking way they all got off the bus one by one um kind of shot the shit with everybody and uh and then one of my boys just asked method man he was like yo you trying to smoke and he was like yeah you got trees he's yeah of course <laughs> that's crazy <laughs> went to our room he's like all right he's like meet me you know room 202 i think it was or whatever go up to the room grab the weed Go back downstairs, and I'm like, bro, we're about to knock on some like old lady's door. Like, yeah, I was about no to ask you. Like, there's no <laughs> chance. Like, you're thinking right now. Like, knock on the door. <laughs> Capadonna answered the door. Matt's on the couch rolling up. Capadonna's like, yo, yo. He's like, you got, you guys got to call three, three escorts before you come in here. I met the man's like, yo, fuck him. He's like, come on in, fellas. <laughs> really in, rolled up, smoking. We chilled with him probably for like two hours. That's crazy. Coolest motherfucker crazy. I've ever met. Yeah, we talking about video games movies tv shows he was telling us stories from tour and shit yeah it's wild real real like chill down to earth dude yeah, good good for him to just do that to two to right. smoke with to, three white boys you know what i mean in worcester after a show <laughs> <laughs> he, do that. he definitely did not have <laughs> to do that so, i don't know if there are many people that would do yeah, that <laughs> I was like, Yo, this is so to this day salute method man that's my favorite member of wu-tang i was i was gonna say that's got to be quite a quite one of your oh, favorite yeah. memories you know as, <laughs> as a absolutely still as have a, the polaroid picture too i believe it that's fucking <laughs> awesome man good shit um, Giles, best moment or favorite moment playing Pop Warner football? Huh. Um, probably just like I have two. One was a good moment. One was a, like really sad moment. Not sad. But... First of all, before I ask that, <laughs> position you had to have played on the D line. I played D line. Ah, I, I played O line. Played tight end. <laughs> Um, oh, okay, so you got good, you got good hands then. You can catch. Yeah, the yeah, a little yeah. Bit no, but like, right. it's funny because BB don't really know. They didn't, they didn't really know me like. Like grade school, junior high, like I was really good at sports. Like, yeah, really they definitely don't because I asked and not, I didn't, yeah. I didn't get much back. So. Yeah, yeah, they don't really know. <laughs> yeah. like, people back in the product say no. Like I was really good at football. Played baseball for a little bit. Um, nothing too crazy. Basketball, but football, um, probably like getting a, like some sacks because in like PB football, everybody it's mostly runs. You're not really throwing it a lot. So getting a sack was uh, multiple sacks were really fire. Then. um I remember it's the last game of the season. It's probably my seventh grade year. And, um, you know, it's one of those things like we know we're not going to make it to the playoffs. Or but you want to try unique things. And all week they had me playing, um, like, the two-back, like, like during practice. Like, cause I was, like I said, I was good. I'm not going to say, like, I was about to make it. And, like, not even close was I going to make it. But I was one of – I was athletic on the team. So I was getting reps, running back reps. And I'll never forget, we used to play at the Brockton High football field. The day before, the games were always on Sunday mornings. Saturday night, it was like a downpour, like a downpour. So the rumor was the game was canceled. So, like, it's sixth, seventh grade. I didn't even really care. 
Like, it wasn't like I was excited. I was just like, bro, I got other stuff to do. Like, not other stuff to do, but <laughs> that's not like a big What else are you doing at seventh grade? Well, well, I wanted to hang out on the projects, probably just hanging out. But it was a downpour, and, like, they were saying, like, yeah, the, uh, uh, the field's flooded, so there's no game. So I make nothing of it. Then, like, maybe, like, that same day, like, in the afternoon. It was the last game of the season, too. Like, it's, like, literally, like, return your pads, like, Last convo, you're not going to see nobody until the school year, your friends. Yeah. Uh, later that day, one of the older kids came to my crib. He's like, yo, why weren't you at the game? I was like, bro, what? That was literally my only oh, attempt shit. to play running back. Like, literally the only attempt. To and you thought the game back. was canceled, but the game actually yeah, I was told it was canceled, but the game was, yeah. Was a random Aww. person said the field was flooded. Like, I didn't even get confirmation. It was just like another person who played before the older kids was like, yeah, there's no game tomorrow. Then it turned out there was a whole game tomorrow. Then, like, that kind of, like, was, like, whatever. That could have been your moment. Nah, man, I played tight end. I got a couple end arounds, like, got the ball thrown to, but no receptions. But so, like, it was, like, just got some sacks and shit. <laughs> Sucks getting bad intel, man. It's not great. Yeah. It was, it was That's a great story. Uh, all right. Villain. As someone who's afraid of heights, which is scarier, looking out the window of a plane or being on top of a mountain, which would be scarier for being you? Being on top of a mountain. Yeah. We're in the same boat. I don't do heights. Yeah, I don't nah, do roller like coasters. Bro, if I'm on, if I'm I don't on do top, roller coasters because of I just get motion sick. I can't do if it. If I'm but. on top of a like a building, you know, on the on the roof or whatever, um, yeah, I got to be in the dead middle. I'm not going same. anywhere. <laughs> I could be on like like on the top of this. You know what I mean? It could be just flat. I got to be in the middle. I'm not going anywhere near the edge. Nah. So if you have the window seat in a plane, you're not open in the window? Oh, no. Nah, window seat in the plane, I'm cool. Oh, okay. That's you cool. Know? All right. Yeah. No, okay. I'm, I'm fine. I put that window fly. down. I'm, fly, I'm fine <laughs> flying through a tube in the middle of the air. But, <laughs> but yeah, not nah, standing on top of a building, no way. Well, <laughs> fair enough. No okay. way. <laughs> uh, Giles, true or false, EA Sports tweeted about the Mookie Blaylock album. Did that actually happen? <laughs> <laughs> Who sent you that? That's funny. Oh man, that, was that you, villain? Yo, it was like it was like a week. <laughs> I didn't even think I told anybody this. Nah, you, yeah, that's you what I'm saying. Me? Like, don't worry about it. I don't, yeah, I don't think I even told VB about that. Like, that was just yeah. hilarious. Um, wait, did you get tricked? You got to tell the story. Did you get tricked? Or you was joking with me? No, no, oh, you I was, no, it was a joke. I, did, uh, yeah. I, I did it. He, yeah, he, so you did it. Yeah, he okay. sent me. He sent me a, a, a screenshot of a tweet uh, of like EA Sports. Like, <laughs> I was like, wait, what? So I go on, I go on Twitter and I look. I was like, I don't see it. But he was like, that was the same. That's funny. I don't remember. Like, <laughs> yeah, I could have sworn I told yeah, nobody man, about just, that. Just you know, just trying to get, trying to go. I don't know, think you did tell anybody. That's all I gotta say. Different viral <laughs> promo. Oh yeah, shit, facts, man. facts. I mean, like, I got I got a couple other ones in the in the cut. That's you know? fucking yeah. hilarious. Well, you're known to troll a little bit on Twitter, aren't you? Very yeah, see, that's so, what you, yeah. It's, it's par for the course when it comes to when it comes that's to viral villain. <laughs> side. <laughs> oh, that's good. I'm glad. I'm glad I got that reaction. Um, villain, you being somebody who stays away from red meat, what's the best place to get a good chicken sandwich? I know you're a big fan of chicken sandwiches. Ooh, uh, shit, man. Right now. So there's this place. There's this place in Portsmouth, New Hampshire, called the Wilder. They okay. got a crazy fried chicken sandwich. Um, but you know, if, if if you're not trying to go that far, Chick Fil A be hitting. I I like Chick Fil A. You know what I mean? Chick Fil A like solid. Chick Fil A, the Chick Fil A sauce. Um, All right. Yeah, that's that's my go-to. Okay. You know? Fair enough. All right, I like it. <laughs> uh, Giles, VB member with the best sense of humor. The best sense of humor. <laughs> 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 oh man, that's not, I feel like it's. Uh, let me think of everybody ranking them, bro. There's so many. Lumbo, no one is. Lumbo, a better question would be like, who is the least funniest? Okay. Everybody, <laughs> all right, then that, no, 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 I was just I was, I was saying that out loud because that's all. <laughs> but I'll say my two, my all right, my two favorites is uh, Ricky and Invader. Invader does really good impressions. Me, uh, had some good ones too. You actually gave me, yeah, some, me some, just some, good you gave me a little bit of intel. But yeah. nobody beats Invader's impressions. Okay. But, Invaders are um, good. Ricky's just like literally the life of the party. Like, like, yeah. yeah I think it's like Ricky, one, Ricky. Then like everybody else could fight for number two. Okay. Like, type of thing. I mean, I'll put me first, honestly. <laughs> but Ricky, then like everybody else could be whoever they want. Sounds good. I like it. <laughs> uh, villain, describe your custom villain suit. Oh, I got a couple. 
You got a couple. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Well, which, well then which one's your favorite? Well, no. So, so yeah. So, <laughs> change so the question. back in the day, yeah, I used to, I used to work at men's warehouse and, um, yeah, I got custom suits and, and on the inside of them, they say custom made for vinyl villain. Um, that's dope. Yeah. I don't know. Probably the, I got a gray one that's like blue pinstripe. It's real tapered look. Wait, or, no, I think you meant like super, like villain, like you're a villain, like a bad guy, a cape. Is that what I don't, I don't, I don't, know. Oh, I don't, I don't know. know? I was told to ask you about your oh, villain oh, suits. Oh, dude, that's, that was what I was told. So oh, whatever, I whatever. you meant like you last like, yo, a superhero? Like, or some like, nah, bro, if shit. I was a superhero, I'd be rocking a fucking suit too. <laughs> <laughs> you know, some well, on that, why, why, why not? <laughs> who's, who's, who's your favorite villain of all time? <laughs> Fuck it. Uh, ooh, my favorite villain of all time. I mean, I'm a Batman guy, so I love the Joker, but yeah, that's just my that's wrong. that's my shit. But yeah, which Joker though? Oh, Heath Ledger is no question. Yeah. Oh my God! I mean, he was so good at like yeah. he went crazy. Yeah. <laughs> he unfortunately, had like a mental breakdown from it. True, true, true. That performance is one of my favorites ever. Even though it was, I mean, I, I'd give right. I'd give the performance back for him to be alive, <laughs> yeah, of course. Yeah, right, but right, you right. know, it goes without saying. But yeah, that performance was unbelievable. I don't know, man. It's my favorite villain. Ah. Uh, the Butcher from The Butchering, uh, from Gangs of New York. Oh, that's a good one. Yeah, that's a good Bill choice. Butcher. Great, great film. Great film. Yeah. All right. Final question. This one goes to both of you. So you kind of already alluded to it, but you can you can go with it, or you can pick something different. But is the, or which athlete did you not name a song after that you wish you had on Mookie Blaylock? Oh yeah, yeah. Allen Iverson Allen or Iverson. or Ken Griffey Jr. Okay, mm, those are two know, good choices. Yeah, Ken Griffey. That Ken was Griffey, my dude. Dope. Yeah. Good choices. Well, that's it. It's pop quiz. You both passed. Excellent job. Thank you. <laughs> you that, did, was you pretty, that was an easy pop quiz. <laughs> right. It was a, it's, it's about you. So it's normally, you know, you might be a bit shocked some of the things I found, but that's okay. It's, it's all right. It's all right. It's not like it was anything out of super left field. So no. um, I've asked this question to a couple of different people that have done this simil- uh, this this sort of thing. So I asked this question to Meech because he's working with John Glass on a project. I asked this question to Chiz Capo when he worked with SK on a specific project. And I'm curious for both of your guys' perspective perspectives you know what are the pros and cons to working with just one producer or just one artist on an album because i know that's becoming more of a regular thing where a producer and artist will get up and they'll you know at the very least put out an ep versus like you know even potentially a full project um i'm kind of curious to hear your guys' thoughts on that process of like you know what are some of the great things about that maybe some of the drawbacks if there are if there are any uh, maybe villain start with you i think um i think it's easier to hone in on a sound you know and and even just it's you know come up with a concept um everything you know i just i feel like the the art of creating a conceptual album is lost or has been lost um because you know even back in the day like in the 90s you know you look at like illmatic that had different producers on it it still was conceptual um but nowadays i feel like when artists get beats from different producers it's just whatever they think is fire at the moment and and then they did write their song and they put it on an album and it may not necessarily fit in the album you know what i mean in the grand scheme of things so at, at the end of the day you're putting out a mixtape in my opinion um so yeah i think working with one producer one artist it's just easier to come up with a concept and just make sure everything sounds I don't want to say the same because you don't want that, but like some cohesion there. Yeah, at least. cohesion. That's the word I'm looking for. English teacher. Over here. <laughs> <laughs> uh, for me, the no cons. I got no cons. Honestly, I would prefer to just do music with one producer. Okay, it's it's it's, it's easier. Yeah, like y'all got. I don't got a from my artist saying. I don't got to hunt producers down. Um, some of them may not have it, like, does it sound what I'm looking for? Or it might take a while for them to, like, get the sound I'm looking for. Like, um, you know, it could be something like you're working with a gang of producers. You're like, damn, this album needs an outro. And, like, none of them can find you the outro. Or, like, this needs an intro. Or this needs an R&B record or R&B sound. It's like, uh, one producer, he already, we already got the sound, so we could build from there. Like, is this a lot? It lost less stressful from every aspect of it, honestly, like. I don't. I really can't think of any uh, cons, honestly. Nah, yeah, like you said, it's less people to hunt down too for an artist. You know what I mean? You get to figure out all right, how many people am I gonna get beats from? And right. All that. Totally. Yeah. And then you can kind of create that 
I don't know, like a relationship together, right? You obviously like have this sort of thing. You're both invested in it too. I think that's the biggest thing, right? right. Like yeah. um, I, that thought just came to me, but I'm thinking more or less of like, you know, if you're an artist just trying to seek out all the beats, you know, it's like, you know, a producer's not, I mean, they could, you could sell you a lease for a beat or whatever the case, but like that producer might not be super invested in like the actual process versus you both are right. incredibly invested. So yeah. that totally makes sense. To that um, point, that's why I don't sell beats. Interesting. Yeah. Okay. So that's like, that's like I'm, a thing I'm you don't too do. too invested in, in my craft huh. to just sell a beat and not know where the fuck it goes. I like that though. You know what I mean? Cause like that, like I've heard so many stories from other producers, they sell beats and then I'm like, Oh, did you, wh where's the record? Oh, I don't know. <laughs> oh, okay. Well, so what you got two, three, four, five hundred dollars for your beat and that's it. That's you, you, you're done. You, yeah. What if that's, that's yeah. crazy. Yeah. That's crazy to me. You know what I mean? What if like, that song goes big or gets a big sync licensing. You know what I mean? Like there's a, there's a lot of things that can happen, of course. But that, also, I'm, like I said, like I'm just, I want to, I want to hear the final record. I'm a fan of that music. too. Yeah. That's why yeah. I do this at the end of the day. I'm a fan of music. So I want to, I listen to our album on repeat. You know what I mean? I can recite every lyric, you know? So it's like, right. I'm a fan of the music. So sure. I want to hear what is created over my beat. You know what I mean? <laughs> it's funny because, um, rehearsals when we was doing um, for Commonwealth we didn't get to do the festival obviously but yeah it sucks that that got cancelled um, I forgot what record it was I think it was Projects I kept fucking up on a line that I'm like yo what did I say then you, say, then you answered it for me yeah, I was man. like I'm a fucking rapper he knows my lyrics <laughs> <laughs> that's incredible um, I, I didn't write this question down but as I listened to the project again today just preparing for this episode I Noted, Giles, like just in a lot of your music from a long winded stance, you know, you really do talk a lot about the struggle and sort of coming from essentially, I don't say coming from nothing, but coming from a place of, you know, just struggling and, and right. financially and all that sort of thing. And I know that that's for you, it feels like something that's near and dear to you. So, like, you know, what does it mean to you now to feel like, you know, there's traction with this music thing? And, like, you know, do you feel a, a larger sense of responsibility? given where you've came from to like where you feel like you're going and where honestly you've been going, I, I should say. And I, I obviously right. too, I just want, I respect a lot of what you talk about because it feels very true to you. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, um, like early on when I first started rapping, I was just more like, I was just rapping. I wasn't saying anything like there was no story behind it. You know, when you first start rapping, you just trying to copy everybody. So I didn't want to be the person like, just rap about a bunch of money I don't have, this and that. I'm like, I, I can't relate to that. Then, like, I was just bumping Mozzie. I, around the time I got introduced to Mozzie, and, like, he was telling, he was saying shit on his records. I'm like, damn, like, I really felt him on that. So, like, my thing was just to always, like, just speak about what I know. Mm -hmm. And I say it all the time. I know more broke people than rich people. So I feel like if you fuck with me, you fuck with me. And a lot of people who really fuck with my music, they tell me, like, nah. Like, they, they, when they recite a bar, it's usually, like, a struggle bar, too. Like, about some, like, struggling shit. So I just feel like it's just, like you said, like, as I get bigger, it's um, definitely more responsibility because as I get bigger, the, um, the fans or the more ears get to hear it. So, you know, some people, you know, deserve to hear my, my truth. So I just feel like, you know, I, I have a responsibility to just tell my story the best way I can. So that's where all that stems from. Yeah, and I think it in a lot of ways, you're right. Like, I think most people can relate to, you know, either being broke or knowing more people that are broke than rich. So I feel like you're, it's, it's more relatable, right? It's less of this sort of like, I just feel a lot of honesty in your lyrics. And I think that's yeah. why I've always liked you as an artist because I feel like I, when I listen to a Giles song, I get Giles. I don't get right. who Giles is trying to be or who Giles wants to be. It's right. who you are in that moment. Yeah, it's not, it's not, you've been. it's not sexy in hip hop, I guess. <laughs> it is what it is. It's really not. You know, some, some people don't want to hear that shit. Some people want to dance. Some people want to hear like, you know, some bounce. I mean, I got that too, but. They don't want to hear about like you know three three people three brothers on one bag. They don't want to hear that shit sometimes. But at the end of the day, I kind I just make what I what I know. I make what I like. I can make those records. I've made those records. You I, certainly have. You know. So, but I just I make what I like. I put out what I like. As you should. I'll say that I put out the music I like. I mean, I think that's a perfect answer 
great answers from both of you guys. I really appreciate those. Um, all right, so I have a quick uh, new segment we've been trying out lately. It's called Pass or Fail. All right, so it's pretty simple. If I, I'm going to say the statement. If you agree with that statement or you think it's going to happen, say pass. Like, I know some people get confused. They're like, oh, I'd pass that. No, you'd actually like, that's a pass. It gets a passing grade. Okay. Or if you don't agree with it, it's a fail. Okay. So I got three statements. So, um, okay. The first one, they're all sports related, given Mookie Blaylock. Uh, Mookie Blaylock as a Hall of Famer, pass or fail? <laughs> fail. <laughs> <laughs> fail. <laughs> Sorry, Mookie. The Celtics winning the title this year. Pass. I'm passing on that. I'm pass. If we make it out the East, we'll win. I agree with that. If we make it out the East, we'll be whoever's in the West. I agree. I get nervous. Like, yeah, I just like, get nervous. Like that yeah, Detroit like game makes me nervous. Yeah, like the Detroit game that makes <laughs> me nervous. Those aren't even the games I get nervous about. <laughs> <laughs> I'm like, is this the same team? Like, seriously? You know what I mean? But then they, but at least last night's game, they do lose that game last year or the last few years. I feel like, all right. I don't feel great about what happened, but at least it's like, all right, I feel a little more comfortable knowing they actually pulled out a game like that because normally they wouldn't win a game. I, I was ruined. I'm not going to. I put on Twitter. I was rooting for them for, to lose. <laughs> I had a – because, like, the writing was in the air. Like, I got – It kind of was, wasn't it? I follow a lot of sports. Like, you know, like, the algorithm caters to what you like. So, I follow a lot of, like, Celtics Twitter. And, like, for we, I'm talking about, like, 10 days ago. This was circled on, like, Celtics Twitter. Like, Pistons game. If they still have that, then we're going to lose. At the rec- if they break the record, we're going to lose to them. So I'm like, yo, we're going to lose to them. Like, literally two days before I tweeted, watch us lose. So then, you know, I like to sports bet. <laughs> it went from um, Pistons plus 1,600 to, to the day of the game, Pistons plus 800. So clearly everybody in the world was vo- was betting for them to win. Yeah. So I did a nice six-leg parlay. Had them. I took the money line on the Pistons, and I did a couple other ones. I should have done a, ro- a round robin. I didn't. I just did a strict parlay. Five of those six hit. The only one that didn't hit was the Celtics one because I thought they were going to lose. I would have. I you got close there. I got close. <laughs> if it was a round robin, I would have went home with like a band <laughs> if I just did a round robin, but I didn't. So now I'm going to start doing round robins, which, is, which I don't want to. But I was, like, I was really, I was literally at the gym just watching the game, like, bro, please lose this game. It was, a, it was an early game, though. It was like an 8 o'clock game. Yeah, yeah. And all my other bets were like 10 o'clock games. So I'm thinking, uh, well, I'm not paying no attention to the, 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 the uh, my bets anymore. I lost. But then when I looked at it this morning, well, um, oh, late last night, I was like, whoa. <laughs> sucks. Everything hit but that. Oh, that's so annoying. Yeah. But no, it like it did set up for, like the perfect Celtics. It, like it was so Celtics. Oh, so twenty twenties of them for yeah. like Pistons on a twenty seven game losing streak. Celtics went uh, undefeated at home. home right? Best team in the league. Best team, wise. yeah. Best team in the league versus the worst team in the league. Yeah. And then the fucking shit goes to overtime. And I'm like, I'm texting my buddies, a couple of my buddies who are big Celtics. I'm like, this is so Celtics right now for this yes. Like yeah. it's it is unreal. So um, Boston. Yeah, especially <laughs> lately. Especially lately. <laughs> Yeah, we're just getting shafted with some of the sports, but I guess you know we had we had a great run. Um, but I, I genuinely, I'm hoping that they can, the Celtics can finish it, the job because if they can't, I don't really know what other team's going to do it anytime soon. Which leads me to my next, uh, or my last, I should say, uh, statement here: the Patriots will draft a quarterback this upcoming draft. Is that a pass or a fail? It depends for me. Okay. It, they need to stop winning. Like, I don't know why they keep winning, like, bro. Like, stop winning. Stop winning. Lose. Like, just, if they lose out, it's like – because there's some good quarterbacks in this draft. I haven't been watching college football this year as much, but um, a lot of the two quarterbacks are really good. They're, like, top three picks. So, if we slide – I think we're, like, the fourth pick right now. And it's like, who are you going to – the best ones are the top three in my opinion. So if we keep losing, we'll get a quarterback. But if we don't, Belichick's going to take like a fucking free safety from like a, from like <laughs> Delaware state. Or some <laughs> shit. Like, I mean, he's going to be good. Like he's really good at drafting like corners and secondaries, but it's like, bro, we need a quarterback. We need a quarterback. That's so it. badly. No, so my fear bad. is that if they keep Belichick, he will take like an offensive lineman. Like he'll take like Joe Alt from like Notre Dame, who's a good player, but just like okay, I might lose is, my yeah. mind. It's, it's like it's not going to happen. What do you think? Pass or fail on that? Fail. Fail. fail? They're not going to take one. No, that's my fear. I'm nervous. Just, they're not going to yeah. do it. I don't have faith. I don't have either. I don't have any. If faith. he does draft one, probably be like second round, third round. 
Because you got Caleb May, Caleb, well, Caleb Williams, the, the May guy. From Drake May. Yeah. Drake May. But then I like Marvin Harrison Jr. It's my guy. Big yeah. Ohio State fan. That's, oh, really? that's my team. Yeah. yeah Ohio like, State. Fucking hate right, Michigan yeah, I, so much. I was a big Ohio State fan. <laughs> like, Terrell Pryor was my guy. Terrell Pryor. Okay. Yeah, yo, so you were an Ohio yeah, State yeah, fan. I, with, yeah, I, I like it. The, yeah. My uncle used to coach basketball at Ohio State so like when I was a kid. Okay. So that's oh, why really? I've been growing. Since I was a young, young kid. I've been okay. a huge Ohio State fan. That's actually a fun yeah, fact. Ohio State no football. Trouble. Maurice Claret. Like, really? I'm trying to oh man. Maurice Claret. I'm kind of young, Hell but yeah. I watched sports growing up a you lot. Know so your, like, yeah, you know your yeah. Uh, you know your you know your Ohio State Buckeyes. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you know I try. Maurice I try. Claret. That was my dog. Terrell Pryor. Troy Smith. There's, Troy Smith. Yeah. There's some. Yeah, we had some dogs. They never pan out in the league though. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I don't know. You made them. <laughs> Except my guy C.J. Stroud. He's finally. He's he's. Correct. He's playing. I haven't been up to college football as late, honestly. But oh, they the stopped. Past they, couple years, they were. I, I knew they weren't going to do anything this year. I knew when that Michigan game rolled around, they were going to lose. It just, yeah. it just felt. I just felt it. Um, all right, that was pass fail. Good job, guys. Good. Well done. Um, my last question in the main lesson before we get to the final segment of the show is: I want to talk about some of the features on Mookie Blaylock because a wide variety of features for sure. Obviously, Felix from Van Buren, um, yep. Dundee. Um, and then Mari from for formerly from um, 99 Neighbors, which yeah. I, I was stoked to see that feature because I'm a huge 99 Neighbors fan or have been for a long time. Um, I had a few of the other ones written down. Waheed. Uh, Waheed, that was one of them, right? Uh, Waheed, super, super, big super, Adventure Cook, Swizzy. Yep. Um, Swizzy. If I'm forgetting anybody, my no, that's, apologies. That's all of them. That was all of them. But, yeah. um, so I'm curious for you guys, like, you don't have to talk about every single one, but, you know, were all of these just kind of like reaching out via social media or hitting up an, uh, sort of um, a manager like or email? Like, how did you guys, I mean, obviously besides Felix, how did you guys like figure out who would be featured on the album? Was it like there an intention of like, we want to get done dealy, we want to get Mario? Did you just, as the songs were progressing, feel like, okay, this certain person would fit well or was it organic? Right. Like how did all that sort of play? Uh, um, it'll just fit well. I mean, at that I made the records, I just think to myself, who could be on it? Um, like the Feed of Rebel Records. I was like, okay, I want um, Dunny on it because I haven't done a record with Dunny. And um, the album he dropped earlier that year, I was really fucking with it. So <clears throat> I just reached out to him. Then Super, that's my doggy. He asked me to be on. He was like, yo, I'm trying to work. I'm trying to be on that tape. I said, that's no problem. So that's how that <laughs> That's literally just that, just for those two. Um, Beeper buzzing. Well, Felix will feed. Um, what record Felix on? He's, He's on, on Beeper yeah. buzzing. Beeper buzzing. I love that fucking song, man. That's, that's my jam. That's my thank favorite you, song. Thank you. Thank um, you. Oh, I love it. <laughs> 99 Neighbors. Um, we always fucked with them. It was like, I, I didn't really know about them until like we started like blowing up VB. Then everybody's like, yo, there's another collective in New England. I'm like, I don't know anybody. Oh, I don't yeah. know shit about Burlington, Vermont. <laughs> but then like, Deep. Yeah, it is. Oh, it is. Man, that was a drive when I went out there. Oh, you went out there to. to I saw their last show. Oh, that's show. oh, that's sick. Yeah, yeah, I was um, there. But it's not to cut you off, but I think it's so. I think it's incredible for a collective from Burlington, Vermont, to get yeah. as big as they did. Like that's a huge accomplishment. That's, that's the first thing I said to. Um, that was ironically the first time we um this past couple months. That's the first time I actually met Mari in person. Okay. Um, I told him I was like, bro, if you could make it out here, like I people say that about mass. But when I went to Burlington for him, I was like, "Yo, y'all can make it out here, bro. Like, you, yo, you got, you can make it anywhere." I agree, like, hundred percent. There was nothing there. I mean, I was only there for like twenty four <laughs> hours. Uh, Josh is like, "Get me back to Brockton now." <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, um, but back to story. Um, yeah, sorry. <laughs> uh, yeah, ninety nine. It was kind of like, oh, ninety nine VB, da da da. And like, I don't remember how it happened. I think they just like, I don't know who followed each other first, but we all like followed each other on social media. Everybody. Then, uh, you know, it'll be Twitter share, social media shares. You just talk via whatever. And um, Wahid is not from 99, but him and um, him and Mari got a, uh, they got a group called Black Knots. Um, and it's them two. Um, and Julian, the producer. Um, so we was always cool, whatever. We never, then they like, yo, you trying to do a, a song together. So me, so I did a record with them. Um, that's like in the cut. They're gonna release that. I don't know when, but I was like, yo, I wanted to put like some more um, homies on who I think are really fire. And I think while he he's from Orlando, I'm like, yo, he's fire. Then I reached out to Mari, 
I was like, yo, Mar, I need Wahid on this too. Then, like, they sent their verses in, like, 24 hours. That's awesome. Like, just, like, like easy. Like, and that, yeah. So, I had the record done. No, I don't even think I did my verse, actually. I think, I think, um. No, we had their verses because we, yeah, we, we had their verses, it, right? Yeah, we lined it up, lined them up, and then, then you laid yours down. Did I have a hook? I think, I think I gave them just a hook. Yeah. Yeah, I just had the hook. Well, that hook is enough to. Yeah, yeah, that's one of my favorite. That's my yeah. that's, for the reason of that song being one of my favorites. That hook is like yeah. crazy. Yeah, yeah. I just, so I, so yeah, I just had the hook. I sent it to him. They sent it back, and like we built a relationship. From that's kind of like when our relationship really, really like started to grow. Um, was after that, and like we was all in the same um, distro. I'm at one point um, VB in um, ninety nine. So there's that connection as well. Cool. Then um, <clears throat> so then Swizzy. Off, um, um, I'm drawing a blink on a Swizzy record. What's He's on this. Mass Appeal. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, I seen, um, uh, I went to a show to watch Invader perform to support. Then Swizzy was one of the openers, and I was like, damn, this kid's fire. Like, he was just rapping. I didn't even know there was rappers like that out here. <laughs> like, <laughs> rapping like that over those beats, all that. Then, um, ironically enough, he did a record with Super like a month later. So that's second, like, and he did he did a great job on that record. I was like, damn, that's twice I've seen this kid in like a month. Like, I got to reach out to him. And I reached out to him. I was like, yo, I already know who y'all are, bro. Like, I fuck with y'all. I was like, all right, bet. I was like, I'm going to make, I'm going to cater a record to you and I'm going to send it to you. And like, he laid that shit down. Um, and that Venture, that's the homie. That's a skit from Brooklyn. Venture's from Brooklyn. He's from New York. Person that that's his personality. If you listen to the skit, that's venture like to a T. Like he no talks shit. his shit. He's a comedian, <laughs> like professional, like comedian. He writes. He writes for like I don't know, miss speak for him, but he writes for like television. Like oh, he, shit. yeah, like he does just a lot of cool shit. Then like the only studio one was just um, the Dunny and um, Super. Got it. Yeah, we that's recorded. They they pulled up to the studio. To nowhere. And recorded all that together. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah, that was dope. And Dunny did his thing. He came in. He was like, yo, I got a video shoot I got to go to. Came in, laid his verse, and left. I was like, hey, boy, I don't need, we don't got to talk. I'll talk to you another time. He gave me a great verse. Get out of here. That's fine. Awesome. So, yeah, that's like all the features. Mookie Blaylock, people. If you are not hip yet, you need to be. Get uh, it's linked in the description. So the after, after this episode, <laughs> album of the yeah. year, after this episode, make sure you guys check it out wherever you get your music. It's out now on all streaming platforms videos are out now as well a few of them i know one for juice kobe uh kobe fro sauce gardener Tempe. sauce gardener Tempe. Tempe. okay wow Glenn so like, rice yeah we got so like six videos there's like six videos we so got a couple yeah. more in the cut it's gonna drop soon get yeah. lost yeah. in mookie blaylock yeah. like it's it's here uh guys uh, well thank you both for coming through this has been such an amazing thank episode I, I love talking tracks. about the of course no of course anytime i love talking about the insight through the project and you know getting to know you both a little bit better as well um, my final question, yeah, this is the open response and in the open response. We do the dream song scenario. So I actually believe if I'm not mistaken, Charlie machine from CWTFB, the first time you went on his show, he asked you this question cause he got it from me. It's so this is <laughs> if I'm not mistaken. Any, I will say shout out to Charlie cause he did. He did like credit me for it, uh, so I appreciate where? that a lot. I believe it was your I was episode. Say, it could be been... careful. <laughs> <laughs> no, he did. No, Charlie. No, there's love with Charlie and I. There's no no beef, Charlie. No, no yeah, I remember, I remember he asked me that. Yeah, yeah, he asked you this. I don't know if it's changed since, oh, yeah. but um, essentially, what it is is you get a song. Uh, I'll ask you both the same question, um, and you get one to two producers. Um, vinyl, obviously, villain. If you want to just produce it yourself, that's fine. You don't need it. But if you want to have another producer jump on with you, yeah, feel okay. free. And um, and then three guest features. So it's your song. Any artists and producers that are alive. I don't know who feels ready to start, but whoever is ready to go can go first. And you both get. And again, they're it's a vinyl villain song, a Giles song. Uh, all right, cool. I'll go. Go, go for yeah, it. For the sake it is, convo. Ideally, it will be villain. <laughs> but for the sake, of, we'll switch it up for the sake of people watching. Well, it's dream song. It'd be anybody right. in the world. You know? No, I'll still like... take villain. Honestly, <laughs> like, take... I don't really... <laughs> but uh, for this, so all right, villain, get out. All right, who would it really? Be? <laughs> <laughs> uh, so like, um, man, because when you, it's funny, because my head goes to so many things. Like, like the fact you said I put three artists. Like, what comes to my mind is, are they gonna mesh well? That's what throws me off. But. Honestly, who I really just like, I won't even think like that. Just like, right, I'll, yeah, get a, just, I'll get an yeah. alchemist produced beat. 
give me off rip. I need Bodie James. That's like Ooh. my favorite rapper. Good choice. Like within the last three years, he's been my favorite rapper these past three years. I need Bodie James. Um, I need Currency. He's the rapper I like grew up. He was like my first favorite rapper. So one of my favorite rappers. And um, <clears throat> third, I mean, that's enough rapping between us three. I'll probably throw like, I might throw in an R&B artist. Let me think who I want to throw in in there. You ain't gonna get the the guest verse from Al? No, no, I'm good. I'm good. It's, I sort of got. I'm not even saying this for the sake of. This. I was bumping um, First Infantry um, last night. Nice. There was some heaters. That Lord Banks record is fire. Yeah, banger. Yeah, <laughs> banger. Right, it's called yeah. banger. That's just fire. Um, but damn, R and B wise, I've been on my old school shit. Like I listen to a lot of '90s R and B, so I'll probably get like Joe to see or some shit on the hook. Just, yeah, this is cohesive. I know you were really worried about that, but like <laughs> Alchemist, you, Boldy James, Currency, Jodeci, it definitely Jodeci. would work. Yeah, I think it'll work. Yeah, yeah that totally that's work. Fire. Yeah. That's a great song. That's a fucking smash hit, man. Yeah. What are you talking yeah, about? Yeah, and cohesive. That totally works. Yeah, Al- yeah, Alchemist yeah. and Currency have done plenty of stuff together. <laughs> and Boldy. And Boldy, yeah. right. right. And I feel like, yeah. and I was about to say, as you were going through, I'm like, ah, oh, you and Boldy would sound good on a, yeah. on a song together. That's so. the only like feature I want right now. Like, I'm, And then not like Kendrick Lamar is my favorite rapper ever, but like, Nah, that, that works. That's, that, that, we get Kendrick I, all the time. Yeah, so I show. want, like, <laughs> right, right now, today, I need Bodie James. No pun intended is the only song I've been listening to, like, the past, like, three weeks. Cool. This is his latest record, but, yeah, that's my dream. Boldy. All right. Yeah. Villain. Shit, man. <clears throat> so, three artists and a producer? Mm-hmm. All right. Um, I mean, I would like to produce it, but... You don't. Shape. You don't need. You don't need. You don't need no. <laughs> Go ahead. Just you. You produce it. You don't have to. You know. You don't have to. Uh, yeah, I would get like anybody to else. Produce but. a joint for uh, TF. Okay. He's a uh, uh, West Coast. Um, yeah, I didn't even know you was locked in TF. That's uh, crazy. Yeah, man. That's that's yeah. He's my. He's he's been like top of the list for me lately. Okay. Um. Yeah, I'd like to produce a record for TF, um, Rome Streets, and. Probably Bori. Ooh, that's interesting. That's quite the mix. Oh, yeah. See, he, he. I don't think he. I don't think he's happy about it. No, no. Like, I was he, thinking. He's, like, he's thinking no, like. I don't like, think that works. That's, 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 I know that look. That's a, <laughs> that's I know. I, know, like, I don't know. I don't know. No, no. I'm like. <laughs> no, yeah, I don't know him as well as you do. But like, like, okay, I'm looking at. Okay. <laughs> I'm looking at his face. I'm like, he doesn't approve of this. <laughs> no, 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 no. It is more like the TF part. Okay, poor ETF Rome. I guess he is like dumb. Okay, what kind of? I'll just think about like what. How would you approach the record? Yeah. Like no, trust me. I know a word. It's funny. Oh well, they both. I think be smart. Well, guys, thank you so much for being here. Um, thank you. Really, really a pleasure. Uh, last but not least, plug away. Let the people know where they can find you. Anyone else you want to shout out? Time is yours. So, villain, we'll start with you. You can find me uh, on Instagram at the Real Vinyl Villain. Um, just yeah, bump Mookie Blaylock. That's it. We pushing that, pushing that Mookie. Facts, Mookie Blaylock everywhere. Um, Find me on Twitter at Just Giles, not Just, but Giles, J-I-L-E-S. Instagram, VB Giles. Um, shout out Van Buren Records, um, the real final villain. And we'll be here. Wookie Black LP, album of the year. Album of the year. Yes, sir. And if you're just coming on to us for the first time and you are fans of Vinyl Villain and Giles, you can find us at Turntable Teachers on Instagram and TikTok. You can also hit up our website, turntableteachers.com for all the latest. And then of course, if you're an artist, podcaster, or content creator, make sure you reach out to us at aoastudios.org to book your session or service today. Once again, guys, thank you so much for being here. As always, I'm Mike. That's Vinyl Villain. That's Giles with the Turntable Teachers and class is officially dismissed. Turn, turn, turn.